This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company located in Cary, Ohio, where they usually say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Great seasoning such as the two border. Hey, Jared, I put some two border on Saturday morning on some what you always recommend for the past year on some good old eggs. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, the the old fashioned. I've been drinking a lot of bourbon lately. <laughs> <laughs> old fashioned is right down my alley right now. <laughs> um, it, it the old fashioned, just like the classic bourbon drink. There, it's pretty darn good. <laughs> By the way, just some. We're we're all grilling right now, right? Yes. Take take, take some chicken put it in a baggie of some sort we're going to marinate it put some salt in there we're going to put some cheap bourbon we're not, we're not going to waste the good stuff we're going to put some cheap bourbon in there um maybe a little bit of chicken stock a little bit of chicken broth and then as we put it on the grill we're going to sprinkle some old fashioned on top yes sir man making me way, hungry the salt <laughs> making the me chicken hungry stock. you don't need you don't need both we just need to add some some salt into there so it's one or the other. Otherwise, you're getting way too much salt in there. Sorry. I hijacked your ad read. My apologies. <laughs> Check out those and much, much more over at themedcanadianbbq.com. That is themedcanadianbbq.com. Be sure to use that promo code SNOOPCAST10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Who are the Iron Bean Coffee Company? They are a Ohio-based, veteran-owned world-class, hand-roasted, micro-batch, fresh-to-order coffee company. All of their beans are fair trade certified and USDA organic. They have lots and lots of coffees, uh, mostly non-flavored coffees, but they do have some flavored coffees. Uh, there's the Mom's Carrot Cake. Uh, we are recording this on Mother's Day, after all. The Intense Blueberry. Uh, I've been eating a lot of blueberries lately as I'm trying to get off of added sugars. So I'm trying to uh, supplement some of that sugar with some natural sugar, uh, some mint chocolate chip, if that's a thing you're into. Uh, there's also the Irish cream. Uh, that's a, one of the newer flavored coffees that they have. And then they also have the Dylan's grog, which is a, a, a traditional grog. And I think a lot of coffee companies have a grog. I think you, you, uh, you know what's happening there. So uh, it's, you know, it's butterscotch, it's rum, a uh, hint of vanilla, fantastic coffee flavor. I think, I feel like the, I feel like the grog is like the, is like the IPA of the coffee world. I feel like every, every micro roaster brewer has one and I'm not complaining about that. So you can find all of that and more at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. Let's go on YouTube and our fellow Discord friend. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> we we didn't know when. I'm I got I got a bit of the uh, the bit of the Fauci ouchie going right there. I got my second I got my second vaccine and I've just I've not been in it this weekend. Uh, so I got that going on. Kyle was traveling this weekend, so we did not give a ton of uh, heads up on the recording time. So right now, our our lava audience is a. Uh, is 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 one <laughs> it's our geographically challenged friends of the north michigan bucknet uh we'll, we'll see if other people jump in as we record uh, yeah that's uh that's uh <laughs> the one and only he says i mean he said the on and only but i forgive him as someone who uh also never proofreads the <laughs> uh by the way uh i've seen people in our youtube comments complain that we procrastinate at the top this is not procrastination. This is exclusive YouTube content. The audio only listeners are listening to the intro music right now. This is not procrastination. This is YouTube exclusive content. Do, do not disrespect this moment of the show. This is just for our YouTube audience. Yes. All right. But that being said, let's rejoin our audio listeners. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Well, welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right, Jared. How are you doing today, sir? I'm uh, I'm doing okay. Um, I was just telling the YouTube exclusive folks that uh, 
I got my second vaccine, so I got a little bit of the aches. I got a little bit of the got a little bit of the glaze over as far as just sort of feeling fatigued or whatever. Um, so, you know, I'm not I'm not complaining. I'm I'm uh, I know a lot of people have had a lot worse reactions to the uh, to the second to the second uh, shot. I had nothing the first shot around. I felt great. I felt fine. I didn't even notice anything happened. And now I'm just feeling a little blah about it. And so, you know, whatever. It's fine. It's it's all good. I'm uh, I'm not complaining. I mean, I'm complaining, but I shouldn't be, I think, is maybe what I'm trying to say. Now, this is procrastination. <laughs> all right the youtube right. people get that joke <laughs> we we'll, we'll got some items today we are we are of course in the wasteland here but we'll officially some, this is episode one of the wasteland yes we got some recruiting news we got some transfers basketball talk and bit. also some and also some columbus crew news oh so, mm. we're, 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 we're gonna we're gonna go into that we're gonna go into that but first off um Ohio State, or more so all outdoor stadiums. Or more so the state of Ohio. Yes, for the state of Ohio. Governor DeWine saying he feels very confident that football stadiums, and then more so later to um, the Cruz Stadium, that the stadiums will be at full capacity this fall. Yeah, yeah. I feel good about that. I feel I feel pretty good about that because, I mean, I, I know I'm not trying to get super deep into COVID talk and all of that because, Lord, um, we've, we've done too much. We've tried to avoid doing it over the past year and still have done it too much because it's unavoidable just in context of everything that was the past football season. And. You know, it's just it's nice to see the other end of the tunnel. I'm I I this is a purpose worn shirt right now. This is the Newport Music Hall, uh, which is a historic concert venue here in the uh, great city of Columbus within the great state of Ohio. And it's just like uh, I got my second vaccine and I'm really looking forward to going to shows again. And I'm really looking forward to going to crew games again. And I'm really looking forward to, you know, going to an Ohio state game and, you know, just sort of looking at the other end of the tunnel. Um, it's, it's a, you know, it's a great feeling to, you know, it's just sort of anytime I get up and I feel a little bit of lethargicness on the other side of this shot, it's just like, ah, it's okay. It's worth it. It's okay. It's worth it. And, and, and it is. And let's, you know, I'm, I'm super happy to get back to normal and get back to everything. And, you know, governor DeWine, who I, oh, <laughs> you know, we don't do politics on the show. And I know that there's a lot of feelings one way or the other, but this is good news. This is him delivering good news that we are uh, hoping and expecting. And, you know, especially if he's saying that in regards to the crew, that's a much earlier timeline than September. Because, you know, they're planning on opening the stadium in June, July. Kyle, July. is that the new stadium July. open? I, th I think July 10th. I think yeah. I think July 10th. Is the first I, I game. can't remember if it's late June or early July, but yeah. So, you know, if, if he's feeling good about that, then, you know, that makes a September deadline for Ohio State looks look, you know, that much better. So, you know, I know this isn't a crew podcast, and I, I say that knowing what we're going to talk about. We're going to spend a little bit of crew time later. Just a little bit, I promise. Guys, just a little bit, just a little bit. But you know, this, you know, we we talk about the crew specifically in this case within the context of Ohio state that, you know, like I said, if, if one feels good for July, the other one should feel great for September. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, kind of wanted to segue into the Columbus crew, but I want to, I got a lot. I want to, yeah, we, we got to do Ohio that, state you know. stuff first. We'll get so, to um, related to still college football here. Former Michigan, yes, former Michigan co-defensive coordinator, Mo Linguist, heading to Buffalo as Buffalo's new head coach, only at Michigan for four short months. What is going up there, Jared? Uh, they, they've had a rash of transfers <laughs> lately. Uh, oh, I think that... Uh, no, not uh, transfers, decommitments... Uh, things are not going great in the state up north. Um, it's, I'd say it's unfortunate, but I'm honestly not losing any sleep over it. 
Uh, how, and- how, how much how much more can Michigan take with Jimmy Harbs up there right now? Like I, what when, it, when is it when is too much too much? They no one there is going to admit a mistake was made. We saw that with the contract extension. And quite frankly, that contract extension, I think Michigan thought they could pull a quick one. I think they thought that they could sign Harbaugh. And then everyone would be like, hey, everything's fine in Ann Arbor. <laughs> Michigan Bucknut says the fan base is, a, is about ready to snap. I bet um, they thought they could fool people with that contract extension for, for Harbaugh. But the media is too good nowadays. They see, they can look at the language of the contract and see how easily breakable it is. It is... Super low punishment for either side to end that contract, which basically means they aren't under contract at all. It's basically a year to year deal because there's no punishment for either side for getting out of it. And people saw that the media is too good. They actually look at these things. You can't get away with that. But who are they going to get to replace him? Does it matter at this point? I mean, yeah, it matters. Don't don't get me wrong. Of course it matters, but the Harbaugh experiment's over. I think everyone knows that, including the people who are still going through the motions in Ann Arbor. But it's just, uh, you know, how does this relate to Ohio State beyond the fact that we just like to point and laugh at Michigan, which, if, you know, we, we don't need a point beyond that, right? He's just pointing and laughing at Michigan. But a really big deal here is potentially how does this affect the recruitment of Will Johnson? Will Johnson, a cornerback out of the state of Michigan from Gross Point, Michigan, was looking at Ohio State, was looking at Michigan, was looking at Michigan, was looking at Ohio State, was was for sure going to go to Michigan. And then there was a, there was noise that maybe he was going to start looking at Ohio state instead. It's real hard for a kid from uh, real hard for a kid from gross point, Michigan to turn around and, and go to Ohio state, especially someone who legitimately grew up a fan of Michigan. That's, that's a difficult, difficult move to make. One of the reasons we saw will Johnson commit to Michigan was because of this coach who's now on his way to Buffalo. Just so we're clear, that's the University of, not the Bills. Just yes, it probably goes without saying, but let's let's go ahead and say it. Mm-hmm. Um, how 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 the, how does this affect Will Johnson's commitment, along with the decommitments and the transfers and everyone else apparently bailing out? How does this affect a kid who is a five star commitment? Number 11 nationally, the best player in the state, one of the top five players at his position in the country. If Ohio State was his second choice, how long before Ohio State becomes his first choice? And it's it's something to keep an eye on. Uh, I'm it's definitely something to keep an eye on. Even when Will Johnson committed to Michigan, and I'm pretty sure I said it on the podcast, someone can go back and look up the episode and prove me right or wrong as you see fit. But I went back. I even then I said, okay, he's committed to Michigan for now. For now, I I never considered this over, and here's just further proof of that. Yep, absolutely. Um, sticking with football here, Jared. Yeah. A couple of uh, tough, it, tough week, tough week for Ohio State football. Um, well, mix. Well, I should say mix. No. Let, let, let's, let's say mix. It's, it's a mix, uh, but always remember that we aren't Michigan. Yes. Uh, so we mentioned in last week's episode, and this is a week old already, but so Jamison Williams, right? Uh, we mentioned last week is um, transferring out. We now f- know that he is heading to Alabama. Yeah, and then we found out this last weekend that Henry Two O Two O is transferring to Alabama as well. Yeah, Two O Two O 
we've talked about 2020. I probably don't have to explain this to anyone who's listening, but I'm going to anyway, because that's what I do. Uh, Tennessee player wanting to leave Tennessee because Tennessee's Tennessee. I don't need to give you a reason why someone would want to leave the volunteers. So he's leaving Tennessee. And the news we heard for a while was he wants to go to Alabama, but the SEC rules about transferring within the conference might force him to sit out a year. And if he left the conference, he wouldn't have to sit out a year. So he wants to go to Bama, but he might go to Ohio State unless he can get around that rule should the SEC change that rule. Then we got some real good confirmation from people who we like saying, hey, hey, he's coming to Ohio State. And we are all feeling real good about it. We were all feeling real good about it. Um, then he committed. Then he committed to uh, to Alabama, and it happens. Yep. I mean, I mean, you you get the sources that come to you can just be completely wrong, or something just all of a sudden change. I think, I think we <laughs> need to get more information about the change in the SEC rules because I haven't seen it. So I'm guessing there's something that. No one else knows that's that's coming along with it. So really curious, really curious. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Um, the. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Stuart Stuart's cracking it open. We might as well get into it. Uh, he yeah. says down. We, ha- we, by the way, now have Nomad and uh, Stuart E4 US vet down in the live chat as well, who have joined us. He says, perhaps we need to play by SEC rules, pay to play. It comes with a car. Okay. Uh, we also have a question from, we'll jump into the Ask Sloopcast real quick because it's relevant to our current conversation. Uh, this is from our good friend, our homie Suncard, who says, uh, so was that kid paid off? <laughs> Michigan Bucknut says it was a nice car. Listen, was there a picture posted to 202's Instagram of him and what appeared to be a very nice uh, Dodge? Yes. yes, that's that's a thing that happened. OK. Um, we don't know. We don't know uh, what, what I don't want to do. What I don't want to do right now, go go to a Michigan message board anytime a player commits to Ohio State. Doesn't matter if it's a three-star, four-star, five-star. Doesn't matter if the kid uh, grew up in Pickerington, Ohio, down the road. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You go to a Michigan message board every single time after an Ohio State, after a high school player commits to Ohio State, and you will see they pay their players. Here comes the bag man, blah, 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 blah. Money bag emoji. Yes. Anytime a player commits to Ohio State, even it doesn't matter if Michigan was even in the running because they probably weren't. Doesn't matter. Someone commits mm-hmm. to Ohio State and the Michigan message boards blow up with. Here comes the bag man, money man, money man. Ohio State pays their players, yada, yada, yada. Did he post a picture to Instagram with uh, his uh, with a brand new, very nice looking Dodge? About I don't know it was brand new. It looked nice. It looked new. I don't know. I didn't see I didn't see the uh, I didn't see the receipt. Um, is it suspicious? Sure. But I, I don't want to be a Michigan fan about it. I'm not saying, oh, guys, I'm sure everything's legit because I don't know. I don't know. But I also don't want to be like, well, Alabama absolutely paid him off because I I don't know. Hey, Kyle, do you believe in Bigfoot? No. OK, uh, my <laughs> answer to that question is, I don't know. I've not seen any. uh I've not seen any evidence to convince me that Bigfoot exists. Therefore, I would say I don't, but I don't want to say I disbelieve in him. And that's just sort of, I feel like, you know, was 202 paid off by Alabama or an Alabama booster or a someone within 
around near the Alabama program to go play for Alabama. Until I see evidence, I don't believe it. Uh, so you can say Bigfoot is a thing or you can say Bigfoot is not a thing. And that's your opinion. And that's great. Um, personally, I don't believe it until I have evidence of it. And that's that's just me. That's not to say I disbelieve it. Maybe Bigfoot does exist. Maybe he does. I'm not suggesting that he I'm not telling you he absolutely doesn't exist because I don't have evidence of it. I'm just yeah. saying I don't have evidence of it. Therefore, I, I don't believe it. Mm -hmm. And him posting that picture to Instagram. <laughs> uh, Sun card, wait, you have Wi-Fi, but you can't see it. I've seen the picture. Maybe it's a lease. Maybe it was. A, I, I don't know. I'm I'm I don't know what his personal money situation is. Maybe he comes from a well-off family. Maybe I, I don't know. Is it insanely suspicious? Yes. I just don't want to be that person who assumes that just because Ohio State didn't get their way, that it has to be misgivings. That being said, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. All right. Some good news on the football front. No, though, no, so hold, no, hold on. Sun, Sun card, Sun card. Oh. He's, he's, he's saying. Do you no, believe no, in Wi Fi, although you can't see it? Well, no, here's the thing I can see it. I'm a network engineer, my man. I'm a network engineer. Just because I don't visibly see it, I see evidence of it. I see evidence of it. You don't need to see it, but you see the evidence of it. I don't mean mm -hmm. literally see it. Well, what I see, Jared, is this last week, it's two commits coming, two commits for Ohio State. Yes. Both three stars. Uh, one is the defensive back Ryan Turner from Hollywood, Florida, and athlete Kai Stokes from Florida as well. Yeah. Committing to Ohio State the past week. Two defensive backs, probably. Ryan Turner's coming in as a corner. Key Stokes coming in as an athlete, uh, probably a safety for Ohio State. I'll say yep, not, probably not, a safety. Not, not, very, not very highly or not very highly rated, but don't let those numbers fool you, though. There's there's some there's some big time uh offers from these kids here. Yeah, and I'll say this. There's the, the recruiting services are obviously behind right now to no fault of their own. A lot of the rankings are made through junior camps. Some of these kids didn't even play, you know, full junior football seasons. Mm -hmm. There were states that canceled football altogether. I mean, heck, there's and then there were camps that were canceled and this is and that's that were canceled. We're super, we're super behind on all of that right now. Jared, just this weekend, the state of North Carolina just finished their football. They, they just came up with their state championships just recently. My point exactly. So we're, we're super duper behind on when I say we, I just mean the football world. The recruiting services are super behind on getting these kids ranked. We're they're just not where they normally would be from an accuracy standpoint, from a detailed standpoint, getting a lot of these athletes properly ranked. So all I'm saying is that considering it's May, we're going to see a lot more changing of rankings between now and in December than we would in a normal season. This season, even if everything goes as normal this season, this recruiting class, not last year's recruiting class, this recruiting class is the one that will be most affected from a rankings standpoint by the mess that was 2020 and COVID and blah, 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 blah. 
uh, sticking. So I'm with, just, I just don't don't take the fact that they're three stars, that they're 381st and 558th ranked nationally. Uh, don't 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 take that to mean a whole lot at this time. Mm -hmm. I agree, sticking, Stuart. Sticking with recruiting here, uh, switching over to basketball, basketball recruiting. Uh, long time uh, Ohio State offer uh, Efton Reed, five star center, really highly recruited kid that Ohio State's been going after for years, just made his announcement to commit to LSU. Yeah. Um, Efton Reed goes to LSU. Um, I think at the time we were first expecting his commitment. We were expecting his commitment and it was like, it was kind of leaning towards Florida state. Um, then he delayed his commitment. <laughs> yes. Stuart, once again, blaming the bag, man. Um, you once again, see a, a guy go elsewhere. Uh, he did delay his announcement. Uh, we theoretically also saw 2020 delay his announcement, um, but that his 2020's announcement was never official. That was never more than sort of message board stuff. So it's not exactly the same. 2020 actually had an announcement date, basically let that entire day pass. And then his mom tweeted out at the end of the day, hey, we're not actually doing this today. So yeah. different in that case. But uh, a couple of weeks ago, Ohio State received news that uh, Joey Brunk, who was a Butler than Indiana center uh, is going to come to Ohio state to play what I assume will be his, I, what I believe will be his last season of college basketball. So when Ohio state picked up that transfer after Efton Reed delayed. So in between the delay and what we now have as a commitment from Efton Reed, Ohio state picked up a really big name transfer. Mm -hmm. A lot of us sort of saw that as writing on the wall that Ohio State did not believe that Efton Reed was coming to Ohio State. So I honestly, I was one of those people. I just sort of let that go at that point. So I'm not super surprised to see him go elsewhere. Um, and quite frankly, I, I, I don't know. I didn't I really wasn't following the recruitment that close after that anywhere. Anyway. Yep. Almost. almost yeah. After after you saw that transfer, it's almost like you're just reading the the tea leaves. There, it's like mm, okay, something's up here. So it, it didn't really surprise me all that much. It suck, yeah, but yeah. didn't really surprise me. All right, so Ohio State picks up two additional defensive backs. Um, got the basketball news out of the way real quick. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna like jump back into recruiting here soon, probably next episode. Probably next episode, we're going to jump back into recruiting. Uh, so real quick, just to sort of get everyone can sort of take these names and, and let them soak in a little bit. And then next week, we're going to get back into recruiting. Mm -hmm. um, we got Quinn Ewers currently in the class uh, being described as a generational quarterback, sort of that next Trevor Lawrence, that next Andrew Luck, that next Justin Fields. like. When we're talking about the lineage of quarterbacks who are allegedly can't miss from high school all the way to the draft, the guys only come around once every few years. We're talking about Quinn Ewers and we'll, I feel good that he's Ohio State locked in. Mm -hmm. So I think we talked a little bit about Quinn Ewers on the last episode, but uh, or maybe two episodes back, but once Texas gave up on yours, then you knew Ohio State was in good position for yours. Yep. So if anyone was going to flip yours, it was going to be Texas. Texas gave up. They went and got a different quarterback. So if it was going to be anyone, it was going to be Texas. It's not Texas. I feel real good that Ohio State's locked in. Oklahoma is about to pick up a big name quarterback. I, I, don't can't remember his name off the top of my head and I don't have that page up. So, he, so if, if anyone, even if it wasn't going to be Ohio state or excuse me, even if it wasn't going to be Texas, then maybe 
Maybe it's Oklahoma. Oklahoma is great at developing quarterbacks. They are. Uh, so maybe if it wasn't Texas, maybe it would be Oklahoma. It's not. It's OK. They're they're also, like I said, about to pick up a big name quarterback. Uh, Nelson is his name. I, I can't remember his first name. No, not Nel. Yeah, Nelson. That's right. Uh, they're about to pick up their own highly ranked quarterback. The, the quarterbacks are starting to fall into place, which is good news for Ohio State. Uh, Jaheim Singletary, uh, another big name corner, um, sort of the guy you pick up after you miss on the, the kid from Gross Point, Michigan. I feel this is it's all it's all fine. If Ohio State can turn around and then also pick up and get two of the best corners in the entire country, if they can go in and grab Will Johnson as well, that would be amazing. But we're we're still sort of feeling that out right now. Uh, C.J. Hicks, uh, one of the most important pieces of this recruiting class, especially from a leadership standpoint, from a rallying the recruiting class standpoint, certainly a very big deal. Um, again, a five-star kid out of Dayton, linebacker, top 20 in the entire country, uh, number one player in the, in the state. state. Yep. You, you got to go after the best in your own state, kind of, kind of show your authority saying this is, yeah, no one should be touching these kids here. Uh, we have Caleb Burton, wide receiver from Texas. Um, Ohio State continuing their streak of picking up top five wide receivers. Yep. Uh, Gabe Powers, number two player from the state of Ohio, also a linebacker. He's from Marysville, Ohio. Uh, another great player. Uh, Jahir Brown, cornerback from um, from Westchester, Ohio. Uh, originally from when Ohio State picked up the commitment, he was from LSU. He has since moved to Ohio. His family's originally from Ohio. Um, th this is a relationship to keep an eye on right now. I, and I think I'll just leave it at that right now. Um, Keon Gray's um, Ohio State, once again, picking up wide receivers. It's, <laughs> it's weird to say this because a, a top 150 player in the recruiting class, right? Top 150 player in the recruiting class. He's not quite up to the stuff that we've seen Ohio State. Again, the recruiting rankings aren't up, aren't right right now. They're they're not. So don't don't take that as a as a slam. Ohio State does not take this commitment if they don't feel great about Grays. So they feel great about Grays. All right. So don't don't take that as a slam. It's not meant to be one. Uh, but he's a uh, top 150 player in the country at the wide receiver position from Chandler, Arizona. Tegra Chabola. Uh, this is our number seven player from the state of Ohio. Uh, he is an offensive lineman uh, from Westchester, Ohio. Yep. Same same team as um, as Brown that we just mentioned at, from Lakota West. Absolutely. Uh, Benji Gosnell, uh, tight end from Kyle. Pilot Mountain, North Carolina. That is up. That is up by near the border of. Virginia, North Carolina. So if you, if you, Jared, drive down from Columbus to Raleigh, you actually go right through Pilot Mountain. I think I actually think I know which mountain that is. Do I know which mountain that is? It's the one where, it's the one that looks like it's a missing a part of the mountain there. I, I'm, I'm, I, I think I know which you one I'm talking about. You can't miss it. I, I'm not going to say, <laughs> I'm not going to say it. Um, <laughs> rounding out the uh, recruiting class, obviously not counting the the two new commitments who we've already spoke of, uh, is Bennett Christian, another tight end, two tight ends. This was always going to be a two tight end recruiting class. So I feel like Ohio State probably feels great about their tight ends right now. Uh, he is from Georgia, 66235, Kyle. That is a big boy. That is a big boy. <laughs> Uh, so th rounding out the Ohio State recruiting class again with addition to Turner and Stokes, who we have already talked about. Kyle, we're we are late for our ad break. So we're going to do our ad break. And then we're going to do a, just a little bit, just a little bit of crew talk. We, we, we know that's not what you guys come here for, but it's important and we must. 
And then we're going to answer some Sloopcast questions. So, Kyle, uh, what's the Mad Canadian got in place for us? Uh, Mad Canadian? Did... Good old spices is what he's got. He's got some good old spices over at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. They grow, the grills are out. I've cleaned my grill. It's all nice and clean, ready for ready for the the warmer weather here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put some good old good old seasoning on some of some great meats here coming up. Um one of my favorites, the snoring heat. Put that on burgers, you put that on especially on chicken, gives it that nice bit of heat to it or if you want something a little bit spicier the four horsemen if you want oh let's see here let's go with the the smoked jared the smoked it gets you that great smoky flavor um i'm just looking to see if anybody else in our chat has an, anything that they're interested in uh the smoke the smoked another great versatile seasoning that's a must have for everybody uh, the S and P bud, another versatile seasoning. Um, uh, which one have you used recently, Jared? Uh, the S and P bud. I had some, uh, air fryer French fries. And as I've said a million times before, the S and P bud is a potato cheat code. doesn't matter mm -hmm. how you're cooking that potato. It's a potato cheat code. Yes. Uh, Nomad um, says he's used the curry nope. steak recently. Yep, curry steak. Curry steak's another great, great seasoning as well. It's one of my first ones I bought, and I, I know my my family, my my parents use that, and they love it as well. Be sure to check out those, and I think 14, 14 seasonings that the Mad Canadian has over at the Mad Canadian BBQ .com. That is the Mad Canadian BBQ dot com. Be sure to use that promo code Sloopcast ten Sloopcast one zero. Check out for ten percent off your entire order. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by, wait for it, wait for it, the Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is an Ohio-based micro-roast, roast-to-order coffee company. We, we went over all that already in the first ad read. I also told you some of the flavored coffees that they have. Well, guess what? They have a new line of coffees. Uh, these are called the Murder Coffee Company. Coffees. They're, they're the Murder Coffee Company. It's within the Iron bean coffee family uh, we have here the cereal killer which is a vanilla buttercream coffee uh let's see we also have the stay awake uh it is highly caffeinated uh perfectly roasted coffee beans produce dark bold highly caffeinated coffee blend uh then there's the bloodbath which is a red velvet cake uh, hellacious and graphic scene that results in blood dripping all over the walls produces puddles of blood of all sizes across the floor. That is disturbing. Uh, <laughs> one hundred percent arabic beans are roasted perfection with notes of decent, cho of excuse me, not decent, decadent coffee cake, uh, a hint of cream cheese frosting. Uh, there is the turning blue, which is a blueberry cinnamon crumble, 100% Arabic beans roasted to perfections with notes of blueberry and cinnamon. And then there's the solus. Uh, the solus is um, a gingerbread coffee, uh, excuse me, a ginger snap coffee. Uh, fact or fiction, we love gym, gingers and we love this ginger I man, I'm all over the place on this one. And we love this gingerbread coffee, uh, medium roast coffee, 100% Arabica beans. It's uh, another tremendous coffee, especially if you're into uh, a, a ginger flavored coffee. So all of that and more can be found at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. Nomad says we should call it the IBC universe. Yeah, I think that will be the phrasing I use for now on Nomad. Thank you. Uh, Nomad also points out that it is the year of the tight end. And of course it is. I know we say it every year, Kyle. I know we say it every year, but I actually do believe. I actually do believe that we are now officially. 2021 is 
finally, what has been foretold for decades, this will be the year of the tight end. We've not had a year of the tight end since Ricky Dudley. And I feel like this is the year of the cicadas return. This is the year of the tight end returns. It's the year of the tight end, Kyle. 2021 is the year that has been foretold Mm -hmm. for years and decades now. It is finally here. 2021 is the year of the tight end. So Stuart, Stuart, um, congratulating Nomad on rebranding IBC Universe. You know who's not good at rebranding? Apparently, apparently the the people over in the Columbus crew. I'm sorry. Can we take a second with I know I'm ruining it by pointing it out, but that transition. Good God, Kyle, that was butter. Massive, massive report on Twitter uh, confirming that the rumors are true that the Columbus crew are planning to rebrand once again, including a change in their name and logo. Stop it. Logo, I'm fine. You can you can change it. I mean, the, the logo you can is not the logo that old. Be- the logo is his logo. I I grew to like the logo over time. I prefer the classic logo. I want that ninety. I want that original '90s logo back. Even if you tweaked it, even if you modernized it, even if you did something a bit different with it. But I would have, if we were going to change the logo, I would have liked to have seen something to reflect the old logo. Even if you didn't just go back to it. Even if it was just suggesting of it or a modernization of it, I would have liked to have gone backwards. Um, I don't, if the logo we're seeing now is, is real. And it just basically, it's, it looks like the Ohio, you know, Ohio doesn't have a flag. It has a pennant. So it looks like that shape with a C in it and a random triangle down in the bottom right. And I'm telling you right now, I don't, I don't hate it. Like if I hate it, it's just because it's new. It's not terrible. I feel like if you're going to put something down in the bottom right there, why not like a 96 or an SC? Why, Why a random triangle? I don't, I don't get the random triangle. I mean, I get that you're doing it to make the, logo balance but Mm -hmm. um, i i I don't know i don't know and uh, yeah why why would you drop crew okay i can i can understand rebranding i can i can get around that that's fine but changing it from columbus which was originally columbus crew then they changed it to columbus crew sc he changed it to columbus crew sc he did we will not and say now, his name. But and, he, and, now, and now they're just wanting just Columbus SC. Stupid. Quit. Listen. I. We, we shouldn't just like Europeanize American soccer. I get that like. None of the Europe. All the Europe, Europe teams have like. A nickname, but they don't like push the nickname forward. Like everyone knows Manchester United. How many people actually know that they're called the red devils? Not a lot. It's not something that they, it's not something that really gets pushed or advertised. It's not, it's not how European soccer does it, but this isn't European soccer. It's okay for American soccer to have its own thing, its own identity, its own, style of doing things. Why would you, we didn't fight to save Columbus SC. We fought to save the crew. Oh, don't worry. We're still going to use crew in, in merchandising and we're still going to use crew for this. And no, it's called the Columbus crew. Yeah. Don't change the name. The fuck are you doing? They also said the official name of crew 96 or the crew will in the future. But the crew, the the nickname, the crew will not go away and will be used as a nickname and on merchandise. Just not officially, they'll be called the crew. It's just going to be Columbus SC. Stu, no, what? No, I don't care. No, uh, uh-uh. uh. So, Jared, is this phase two of hashtag Save the Crew? It needs to be. What are you guys doing? We saved it once. 
Well, sure. I'm a season sure ticket holder. They're going to hear from here. me. I'm a season ticket holder. They're going to hear from me. They're going to get an email. Well, they're they're they they just re um they just posted a short video. I don't say, care. They, they well they posted a video just says forever Columbus forever Columbus Club forever known as the crew and you can barely see the the logo they don't show it clearly yet but it it matches what's been rumored out there and the ratio in that video is not too kind right now I'm a I'm a season ticket holder they'll be receiving an email from me mm-hmm. that's yep. I'm not going to threaten to cancel because I'm I'm not I'm not it's not, I don't I'm not, not going to make a a veiled threat I'm not I'm not going to put together I'm not going to I'm not going to put a threat out there that I'm not willing to follow up on so I'm not so will they actually care I'm not going to threaten to cancel so maybe maybe I should but I'm not going to like I said I'm not about making threats that I'm mm-hmm. not going to follow up on but yep stupid absolutely ridiculous and that's the end of soccer talk we had to do it so if you were not here for that i apologize that's the end of it but it had to be said all right let's get into some ask sloopcast questions if you yourself want to ask some questions and have it be answered here on our podcast be sure to hit us up on the discord for your chance to ask a question and for us to answer it for you on next on the next episode here Where do we want to start, Jared? Nomad asks, do you have barbecue? And if so, where? Ha <laughs> ha! Good one, Nomad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I refer you to the first five minutes of the show. Um, have the Sloop Cats, those are also from Nomad, become your research reporters now for recordings. I mean, I always appreciate it when you guys correct us for what it's worth or if i ask for info and you guys like actually you you know we used to do the look it up kyle look it up thing and now i kind of lean on you guys for it and it's always appreciated when you follow through uh duncan from the discord asks in the last podcast you made the comment quote all of the buckeyes got drafted in their expected window but on the low end of it considering also that big 10 and Big West, I assume he means Pac. The West. I'm going to assume the, the West, like the West um, division. Okay. Uh, I think he means the Pac-12, but we'll move forward. Uh, underperforming in draft numbers compared to the Dixie and the ACC. How much blame, uh, how much of the blame they'll admit to, but how much blame does Kevin Warren and the Council of Presidents deserve for lost income by players? Who had a huge block? Uh, I, I know what he's getting at. Um, did the conferences who were more restrictive due to COVID, such as the Pac-12 and the Big Ten specifically, do you think that their draft stock was hurt as a result? I think so. It's, I don't really think so. you know, it's hard. It's, it's hard to say for sure. I'd say the PAC 12 players. Yeah. Um, the PAC 12 was largely forgot about this year. They started even later than the big 10 and the big 10 started too late. And again, like we didn't even, how much did we even talk about the S or the uh, PAC 12? This year, um, other other than the Ohio State Oregon game getting canceled, nothing, nothing other than that, really. I think we talked about USC a couple times, but they were largely. I mean, I don't know about the Big Ten, but I think the Pac-12 absolutely those players were hurt. Yeah. Uh, Nomad asks, which two teams will which two teams will be and which should be joining the Big Twelve? I, I who's nomads in the chat who are are there uh are there rumors we're not aware of or are you just you just putting teams in the big 12 for for shits and giggles hypothetically um i don't know kyle who are we put in the big 12 like 
I, I mean, I think it would. I think it would make sense if you want to get. You kind of have. Yeah. Virginia way out there. I think you got to put like Cincinnati. I think Cincinnati is a really good one right there. If you're trying to like keep West Virginia a part of the family, maybe that's the move to sort of move in that direction. Uh, he mentions Houston. Um, maybe, but I think the first two teams you mentioned between uh, Cincy and Memphis, I think probably yeah, I like, feel like I, I like Memphis. It, you, you expand out kind of like what the big 10 did when they got Rutgers and Maryland kind of expand the big 10 territory out there. You go down a little bit into sec territory with going down to Tennessee there. I think mark marketing wise, that'll make the most sense. Like if you go to Cincinnati and Memphis, I don't know about marketing um, or exposure, exposure. Here's the thing. If I think if you're trying, maybe if you're trying to go after recruiting territory, I don't think adding Cincy and Memphis are going to help you a ton from a recruiting territory standpoint. What about Arizona and Arizona state? What about expanding in that direction? The problem is those are populate. Those are, those are cities or those are, that's a state growing huge in population right now. A lot Mm -hmm. of talent coming. Ohio state's been, um, moving in that direction, picking out players from Arizona. What about Arizona, Arizona state, especially if the PAC 12 PAC 12 looks more and more like a conference that's giving up on football, quite frankly. But the, the problem is in, in <laughs> excuse me, um, you can you can look at it, I guess, both ways. But I look at it as why why getting a team more out west when those teams aren't even really getting noticed right now? Maybe maybe adding them in the Big Tw- Twelve could probably help bring some more attention there. But I think I think you stick more into the Central and East time zone, right? But who? That's what I think makes it mutually beneficial because you're expanding your recruiting territory. If you're the big 12, again, Arizona is a state that's growing in population. Mm -hmm. You expand your recruiting reach out that way. You basically take over a whole state. You're not because if you're Memphis, you're always going to be second banana to the Vols. If you're Cincinnati, you're always going to be second banana to Ohio state. Well, now you can go and own the state of Arizona by picking up the two schools in Arizona from, like I said, a conference that is giving up on, on athletics, at least from a perception standpoint. I think, and and by the way, our huge schools are enormous schools, Arizona and Arizona state are enormous schools. So now you're greatly expanding your reach as far as your alumni base, your donor base, it's a very big 10 move to go get Arizona and Arizona state. You're, you're eating geography. You're grabbing up huge alumni bases. I, I understand that Memphis and Cincinnati are the football moves are the basketball moves even, but we really should consider Arizona and Arizona state. Okay. And well, by the way, I'm just doing this off the top of my head and I could be completely wrong. No so, matter with another quite no matter with another question here, how many wins will urban get in his first season at Jacksonville? Oh my goodness. How many losses that urban Meyer have at Ohio state? Was it like seven or nine? No, like more that. than three. Who said three? See you, Stuart. Um, oh, that's wins. How many losses did Ohio there did Urban Meyer have at Ohio State? Was it nine? The number nine sticks out in my head. Seven, maybe nine. Nine, eighty-three and nine. Okay. He should mentally Ooh. prepare to have that many losses this year in Jacksonville. Man, over nine. That's seven and nine. I feel like seven and nine would be. Wait a minute. Did they expand? Is the expansion? Are they going one more this year? Is that happening this year? I think I think so. Okay. So yes. that would be eight and nine. 
That would be an amazing year. To go from first overall draft pick to eight and nine would be an amazing year. The question is, what does that do to Urban Meyer? Does that lessen the pain of losing so that he can better cope with losing by losing more often? Or does that drive him bananas to lose that many games in one year? Mm -hmm. What that will do to the psyche of Urban Meyer will be fascinating or tragic. Uh, depending upon how that goes for him. I'm, I'm quite frankly worried about him. Yeah. I'm not saying that he's going to fail in the NFL. I am saying that he's not going to turn Jacksonville into a playoff team in one year. That's not how the NFL works. I don't yeah. care. I don't care. All right, let's see here. Nomad, another question here. How do you properly tell your wife on Mother's Day you watch the kids so you can lis- listen to a podcast recording. Hey, man, you can stick us in one ear and watch the kids with the other ear, right? Maybe you can't watch us, but. Eh. You can listen eh. in listen. Mm hmm. Uh, Buckeye Zach, do you miss the old ABC Sports and Keith ja- Keith Jackson announcing the game. Keith Jackson in his prime might be the best to ever do it. Um, I'm we're not of the age where he's straight. Oh, I just lost my ear, Kyle. The dog knocked my headphone out. I can't hear anything. Um, I, I don't. We certainly remember Keith Jackson, but I, I know some people have a lot more nostalgia for him than maybe Kyle or I do, but um, yeah, it's, it's, it's fine. I I love uh, Keith Jackson's great. I don't, yeah. don't take that the wrong way, but he's, he's, I don't know if I don't want to speak for Kyle, but I don't know. I know a lot of people just wax poetic about him and I like him, but I just, you know, a few years, I think make a big difference there. Cause you know, I, I mostly remember Keith Jackson on the downtrend when he wasn't necessarily always being great. And I'm not saying he should be judged by that because yeah. when he was the best, he was maybe the best. Yeah, no, I, from what I remember, yeah, he, it would just, whenever you hear Keith, Keith Jackson announcing the game, it just sounds right. Yeah, It's just it does. right. It does. <laughs> I mean, yeah, what, what it just sounds right. Yeah. I, 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 Kyle, Kyle nails that one. All right. Uh, let's see. Any other questions you want to answer here, Jared? Uh, Kaboto with negative recruiting roster events. Kenyatta Goodwin, who Ohio State target from Indiana, goes to Kentucky a few weeks back. Uh, Jamo, we talked about transfers to Alabama. Deshaun McCullough. Uh, decommits and then commits to Indiana uh, 2020. We spent the good portion of the show talking about uh, how concerned should we be with recruiting program attractiveness versus Bama, or should we hold our horses and wait for June? Yeah, it's fine. Don't everything's fine. I'm, I'm not worried about it. Um, if you want me to worry about Ohio state versus Bama 2020 said from the beginning, his first priority was Bama. It's not like his first priority was Ohio State and then switched to Bama. He said from the beginning that his first priority was Bama and that his second priority, if he couldn't because of transfer rules and blah, 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 would be Ohio State. We got excited that the the possibility might be otherwise, but he was, I I think, Mm -hmm. that's our fault, not his. Um, when JTT commits to Ohio state officially, and I'm, I'm emphasizing the word officially there when he com- when he officially commits to Ohio state, we'll, we'll all feel a lot better. If yep. all of a sudden he's decided he's going to Bama and shocks all of us, then we can have that conversation. But as of right now, everything's fine. Jamo left Ohio state because he couldn't get playing time here to go to Bama. It's not like if it was Olave, if it was Garrett Wilson, then we could go into panic mode. 
That's not what happened. I mean, it, it's not like Ohio State's struggling for good yeah. recruits, too. I mean, looking at the 2022 class, yeah. they have the most five-star recruits right now. Yep. They're, they're sitting just a tad behind Georgia at the number one spot there. Yeah, and they were and number two and, in last and I think they're number last three right now. And I think they're number three right now in averages, but that that's skewed for reasons that we explained earlier. But it, yeah, it's has there been misses? Yes, there's misses even at Alabama too. There's misses yeah. as well. But how is it going to be fine? How is it going to be fine? There will be Ohio. There will be Alabama fans questioning the future of Alabama recruiting. Yes, it will happen. They can be as crazy as us. Questioning the future of Alabama recruiting when JTT commits to Ohio State. Has Saban lost it? Has da 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 over one player? And you say, you guys, you're being silly. Okay, well, now take, take that and turn it around and take a look at yourself. It's one lost player. Uh, Jared, it's actually this many lost players. Uh, Kenyatta Goodwin was never a shoe in for Ohio State. Williams left Ohio State to look for playing time. To look for catches. That's a compliment. That's not an insult. That's a compliment. Mm -hmm. Deshaun McCullough wants to go play football with his dad and his brother. Can you blame him? Of course you can't. Those are just circumstances working against Ohio State. It's unfortunate. But no one's to be blamed there. Yep. 2020 said from the beginning that Bama was his first priority. None of this is a surprise. Is it a disappointment in some cases? Yes. But I, mm -hmm. I see no reason for panic. Yep. Agreed. All right. I think that is all. The last question here, we kind of already talked about Nick Saban in Alabama already about <laughs> He he, do, he does ask, uh, should NCA <laughs> finally start doing their job? Guy, Zach. Which is oversight and investigate Nick Saban. Yeah, we, we talked about not getting too deep into bag man conversations. <laughs> but, all right. Uh, that is it, Jared. That, that is all the questions that we have. Any Anything else you want to quickly mention here or... Uh, Nomad wants us to drop a quick fuck you, Dabo. Which I just did. Kyle, would you like to hire, 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 hire a tailor. <laughs> hire a tailor. There you go. Uh, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Uh, I want to encourage everyone to uh, check out the sloopcast.com. That's where you can find links to all of our stuff. Uh, go check out... Um, our t-shirt store, our Twitter pages, our Patreon page where you can donate to the podcast to, uh, I don't know. Just go to the sloopcast.com. You'll find links. I, I'm, I'm tired. I want to go to bed. Kyle, <laughs> what do you have in <laughs> Kyle's corner? Um, well, originally it was my crew spiel, but I'll just, I'll just say that I'll just stick with the crew. Just, I, I really hope that they reconsider, but just I think there's just too smoke right now. Too much smoke. Well, it's, it's beyond right now, smoke. They're absolutely doing it. The question is, well, can we convince them not to? Well, I, yeah, that's the question. I saw that uh, Dom, who used to be for Ten TV, uh, currently is for six. He is. Yes, you're right. Yep. Yeah. Um, he yeah, he has here, here of course. For six, we're doing this twenty minutes too early, Jared. He has a. Um, he has a one-on-one -on -one talk with Dr. Pete Edwards about the changes with the crew. Uh, okay. Okay. And I'm um, looking at this picture and I see a small emblem with a C on it. Conversations will be had. <laughs> conversations will be had. That's, that's all. I'm leaving it at that. I'm leaving it at that. I'm, I'm, I'm leaving it at that. All right. All right. That's it, Jared. That's it for me. All right. Uh, Kyle, I didn't, I didn't line up anything for music. Um, uh, Nomad, you got anything, the Nomad? They all left us. Nomad's here. No. Hey. 
nothing. <laughs> <laughs> he just bailed on me. Just straight up bailed for me. Um, uh, you know, I'll just, I'll just, I'll, I'll jump back to uh, playing the Vapors. They're one of my favorites from the area. Um, I feel like whenever I'm stuck and can't think of anyone else to name, I will go to uh, playing the Vapors because they're my favorite. So, uh, we're we're going back to that well. How about that? Going back to the favorites. Going back to the well. We'll play uh, playing the Vapors tonight. So with all of that being said, uh, I'd like to encourage everyone to listen to local music, drink local beer, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Playing to Vapors. You know, I think it was like one of the early, hi, hi, YouTube. I think it was one of the early episodes of Family Guy where Stewie accidentally gets drunk because it was that early in the run that the baby had to accidentally get drunk. Late, mm. later on he would just do it but early on in the series they had to justify that it happened by accident um and he started like a bar song where he's like i'm tired and i want to go to bed that's me right now that that was the entire point of all of that <laughs> oh, I, thought, I thought there was something more to nope that. that was all of it that was a lot of setup <laughs> yeah no Matt, i had some like irl work like my the work that actually pays the bills i appreciate all the sponsors and i appreciate all the patrons but there's a job that actually pays my bills so i had to get up like super duper early or late it's, it was one of those times a day where you're not sure if it's early or late um to to do some uh actually pays for my mortgage work and um then just the feeling generally lethargic due to the the vaccine so uh just uh a combination of those two things and uh it's going to be an early night for me tonight i i think <laughs> is is where i'm heading yes all right well let's let's go ahead and cut it short there jared oh, so you whiskey. don't have to say so you can't head to bed here and I, I'm feeling I'm feeling a double IPA tonight. I feel like it's a double IPA and then off to dreamland. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, Kyle, let's let's end this thing. So so that I can get drunk and go to bed. Would once again like to thank playing two vapors for uh, as I almost said sponsoring for ending today's show. And I once again would like to thank the Iron Bean Coffee Company for sponsoring today's show. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is a, get this Kyle, Ohio-based micro roaster. Uh, I've talked a lot about their flavored coffees this episode, which I feel like I don't talk about enough most of the time. So let's go back to the well. Let's, let's go back to the, to the standard coffees. Um, I actually drank, you know how tired I am right now, Kyle? I was just talking to the YouTube audience about how tired I am right now. You know how tired I am right now? I drank a full pot of the Fierce today, and I still feel like going to bed. The Fierce uh, is highly caffeinated dark roast coffee. And a whole pot of it, and I still want to go to bed. Um, revolutionary <laughs> blend of nurtured, uh, I don't know this word, Robusta? Add it to the long list of things I've mispronounced on this show. Uh, Award-winning Arabica beans that will wake up your taste buds and fire up your inner rebel. Uh, it has 400 to 700 milligrams per serving, which is all obviously uh, dependent upon <laughs> your tolerance and uh, your method of, of brewing. Uh, it's a dark roast made with 100% specialty coffee beans. Give you the edge and confidence to slay the day. USDA certified organic fair trade to ensure you're getting the highest quality coffee beans available. Taste smooth, never bitter flavors with subtle notes of earth and chocolate. Low acidity without taking away any strength or flavor. 100% natural, no compromise, no anything, no additives, none of that nonsense. See a nomad. Uh, available in ground or whole bean, so you can grind it fresh or simply open the bag and go. And all of that is true for most of the coffees. That was just me uh, going straight at the fierce because that's what I drank today. And um, I'm forcing my way and fiercing my way through this day, despite uh, everything stacked against me at the moment. So 
Uh, that's it. Uh, if you want to buy a bag of the fierce or any of the flavored coffees that I mentioned today, or any of the dozen coffees that I didn't mention today, uh, you can go check out all of those coffees at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode is also brought to you by our good friends over at the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mention a few of the seasonings. I'm going to mention more here, but I'm going to mention more so the box sets that the Mad Canadian has over at his site, themadcanadianbbq.com. He has three box sets for you to choose. He has the... He has the whole hog, which is one of each of the seasonings that the Mad Canadian has over at his website. The Just Send It and the Sweet Heat. Um, I want to go over the Just Send It here. Uh, Just Send It is their most versatile seasoning. Uh, it's a great all-around collection. It's a do-it-yourself, do or not do-it-yourself, but um, <laughs> you can do just about anything with these seasonings here. The S&P bun, it's your basic salt and pepper uh seasoning there uh the sonoran heat one of my favorites there um great with wings chicken burgers gives it that southwest uh taste or you can go with the cajun you want to give that you want to give your food that new orleans treatment with that cajun there great on chicken fish steaks and pork and the smoked mentioned the smoked before um it's what he uses for his um for his barbecue pit, it um, has a smoked paprika in it, so it gives it that good old taste right at the end of every bite. Great on everything. Just put it on everything. <laughs> Check those out and all much, much more with the MadCanadianBBQ.com. That is MadCanadianBBQ.com. Be sure to use that promo code SLOOPCAST10 for 10% more off your entire order. Mad Barbecue Company, where he has your butt covered. 